Previously on Weg's Garage. It's this flimsy cardboard radiator shroud. What the heck were they thinking? I kind of like what I'm seeing with this actually being made out of metal. And aluminum would probably be the best shot at it. So we're gonna get into some fabrication today on Weg's Garage. Oh yeah, you're gonna like that. All right, so we're back here for day two of our radiator duct build. Uh, last week we got this here uh, top piece done, uh, and that fits, looks like it's gonna fit really nicely. Today we're gonna be working on getting the sides done. We got this uh, cardboard template for that, uh, and Dad's already done some work transferring the, the lines to this piece of sheet metal, so he's gotta cut that out get all bent up, and then we'll see how it all fits together with the real, real piece. Here we go. What do we got here, Dad? This is a Melco shear. Use an HVAC cut sheet metal, and the nice thing about this is it doesn't leave a kerf. It goes into your driver drill, hit the trigger, you can see it works just like a scissors. It cuts a nice clean cut. Don't expect everybody in the world to have one of these. I think these things are like 40 or $50. You can do the same thing with a pair of aviation snips, but like I always say, if it's worth doing, it's either got wheels or a motor. Here's our mock-up of our radiator cowl. Uh, a couple of things to mention here. As you saw on the brake, I put cross brakes on the aluminum on the top and also did it on the sides. And the reason for that is to give it some rigidity because we don't want this thing bobbling when air is screaming through here going into the radiator. The other thing that I did is if you look on the interior sides of these, there's a half inch hem. And what a hem is, it's just a piece of metal that you bend over 180 degrees, but when you do that, you double the thickness and you give it rigidity. So we have hems on the bottom and hems on the back of both the sides. And then the top part, of course, 90s here to give us something to screw or bolt into for the sides. And then the top has three bolts that actually mount above the grill into the car. So I think we're in good shape. The next step is to drill some holes and get it mounted and see how it goes. But this has come out pretty good. And I think part of the secret was getting some patterns going first and dry fitting it before we even cut any sheet metal, or I should say aluminum. This is 25 thousandths aluminum, by the way. All right, so here we are under the hood. We got our first side panel we're starting to fit up. There's a couple little details to show you on this. Uh, there are some bolts along that front edge there. Uh, there's actually two holes in the car, but I think we're only going to use the lower one. Uh, and that's way down at the bottom of our aluminum piece there. You can kind of see it. Uh, we got that lined up and fitting pretty nice. Uh, there's a strut here for the bumper that goes through a hole in that front valance. And that we just had to make a little notch around to fit the uh, piece on there uh, and yeah it's actually fitting up really nicely unfortunately this will not be our final attempt at this making this piece because there is one small problem with this one the small problem is 
this is 25 thousandths aluminum. And when we did the hems, we didn't catch it when we did it, but you metal guys, I should have known better. When we bent the hems, it actually cracked and it started peeling up on one end. So we went ahead and yanked them off. So these are the actual hems that were on here. This isn't going to work. I think the solution is going to be that since this metal is only 25 thousandths and it doesn't like to be hem because of fatigue purposes, what we're going to do is this is the front of the car, this is the radiator to give this strength. Instead, don't hem it, we're going to bend them 90. It'll still give it rigidity and it can take a 90 degree bend but 25 thousandths aluminum, at least this grade of it, won't take a 180 degree bend without fatiguing. So we're gonna remake the side pieces and this time on the bottom, a 90 degree, and on the trailing edge, a 90 degree. Okay, we're back. Uh, and while we were away, some kind person snuck in here and fixed our screw up. Just kidding, it was dad. New pieces for our radiator cowl. Only difference is, this would be the left hand side. We still have the one inch flange here to mount on the grill. And underneath, instead of there being a 180 degree hem on here because the aluminum is too hard to handle that, we just bent this at a half inch 90 and this at a half inch, roughly about 60 degrees. So when it's on the car, my hand is the grill. It'll look something like that. So we still get the strength. Instead of having a hem, we have a 90 here and about a 60 degree bend here, plus a light cross brake on the side. Now the thing is, put it together. Got everything kind of dry fitted here, and uh, so there's there's a hole down here at the bottom that the side panel mounts to, uh, and then what we're gonna do is actually rivet the top to the sides. So we put a Cleco in one spot here where we could get the drill in to get the uh, everything lined up properly, and now we can take it off the car and finish putting the actual rivets in there. And then after that, we're pretty much ready for the final install. So we're gonna take this back out, put the rivets in, and then put it back in, and then that's, that's gonna be it. All right, so we got this thing all put together. We used rivets here on this edge. Let's see if I can get that in the shot here uh, to hold that together. So the three pieces are together. Uh, and a couple other details here. We are gonna use some, uh, some of this rubber weather strip along uh, some of the sharp edges on the top and the front uh, just to kind of Pad it a little bit so you don't scratch yourself. Uh, the edges are um, rounded over nicely so they aren't too sharp, but uh, just a little extra protection there. And then uh, we'll put that on with some weather strip adhesive 
and then uh, we'll get it in the car. Well, Mark was telling me that some of you have corresponded with him and have talked about wanting to build one of these radiator shrouds. Well, the first piece of good news is that Mark took the time to sit down and make out a measured drawing of what we actually did here. And if you're interested, I'm sure that Mark would be more than happy to share those drawings with you. The other question that comes up is that what are the minimum tools I need to build one of these things? And this is always a topic of discussions because some guys have all the tools in the world. Some guys don't have much at all. Most people are kind of like us. You're somewhere in between. But I would say that to build this shroud, the minimum tools you would need, first of all, is a good pair of aviation snips. And you don't want to cheap out on these because cheap ones dole pretty fast. The two companies that I like that make these are Midwest and also Malco. Um, I would definitely spend, they're going to be 20 to 30 bucks a pop for a good pair of snips. They're worth it. You take care of them, they'll last you a long time. Another thing you're going to need, if you don't have access to a sheet metal brake, these bends are pretty simple. You could do it with a pair of hand seamers. And all a pair of hand seamers are is just a pair of jaws that you can put on a piece of sheet metal or aluminum, bear down on your bench, and then you can bend it. A brake is nice to have, but it's not a have to have. This you would need though, because if you try to make these bends, just pounding it over your bench, you'll end up with a wide radius on your bends and it will throw off your dimensions from your layout. These are a little better because you can make a sharper bend with it if you get it down on the bench and then do your bends. These are the ones from Harbor Freight. My good pair is in my sheet metal box at work, but these things will run you roughly about 10 to 15 bucks. Another thing you're going to need, obviously, is some way to get holes into the aluminum. I've always found the best that instead of using drill bits, to use a step drill like this. And once again, you don't have to get a super duper expensive step drill. This one, just like that pair of hand seamers, came from Harbor Freight, and I know I got a set of two of these for about 10 or 12 bucks, and you can do different size holes with them. The last thing that you'll need is a pop rivet gun. This thing's about as old as I am. I have no idea what they cost anymore, but it's a pop rivet gun that will handle eighth inch rivets. And you're gonna need that to fasten the top to the sides. It's either that or you'd have to use bolts or screws. We preferred rivets. It's kind of a matter of choice on your part. Last thing I wanna cover is that some of you have also asked, what are some of these tools that we're using? You haven't seen them before. Well, there's two tools that you probably don't have and you don't have to have them because you can do the same thing with a file. One of which is a deburring tool. And this is made specifically for aluminum. It's just got a V-notch inside the bit on the end of the handle. And the reason for it is that once you cut this to deburr it, rather than taking a file and smoothing it, you can take this and pull it along there and it actually takes the fine burrs off of the edge of the metal. The last tool is also called a deburring tool, but this is for holes. And this thing is used when you have a hole such as that, you're always going to leave a little bit of the burrs around the hole, put this in the hole and spin it, and it'll take the burrs right out. 
You can also do the same thing with a drill bit, put it down in the hole, and then turn it with your fingers. Don't put it in your drill, just turn it with your fingers just to burr the hole. But I would say those are the minimum tools. These two tools I just talked about, you're probably not going to have. You absolutely don't need them, but the minimums are the first one I've talked about. So that's a wrap for our radiator shroud build. Really happy with how this turned out. Uh, it looks awesome. I think it's going to perform a lot better than the stock one. And yeah, just super happy with how this looks. Almost looks like it belongs in a race car. If you're interested in getting the dimensions of this, I am going to be putting together uh, kind of a measured drawing. It's not going to be perfect, but uh, I'll try and get that done here as quickly as possible and then find a way to distribute it to you. But leave a comment down below if you want one and I will uh, hunt you down and send it to you. <laughs> That's a wrap for this week. Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Uh, if you like this content, we've got a whole channel full of Triumph TR4 videos, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Later.